technology in the research of an mRNA vaccine is, is much older than just this past year. So this type of vaccine is not new. Um, the concept of it is not new. There would have been no way, really, I don't think, to come up with a vaccine as quickly as they did if they were actually starting from scratch. So what scientists were able to do is take this blueprint for a type of vaccine that we've used in the past and modify it to specifically address the COVID virus. Um, so the efficacy in the studies we have on those other vaccines are, show that they are safe. And then we're, as you can see, we're getting more and more of the population vaccinated with, you know, out having bad side effects and things like that to, to keep that data coming in and prove time and time again that the vaccine in and of itself is safe. No vaccine can be safe for everyone in the population. Everybody's body is different. You could be allergic to one of the ingredients in the vaccine. So you can't blanket statements say the vaccine is safe for everyone in the community, but for the majority of people, it is by far a very safe vaccine. Um, and I also tell my patients a lot of times I wouldn't put anything in my own body or my family's bodies that I wouldn't, that I don't think is safe. So I, and I wouldn't recommend anything to my patients that I wouldn't put in my own body. And I have received both of my Pfizer vaccines and so has my, so have my family members. So in terms of whether or not a booster will be needed for the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine, um, I think that they're researching that currently. And from what I've read is that they, they have seen some benefit to giving a booster vaccine. They've only done it in a very small population, so that recommendation has not been made yet. Um, they'll have to do a little bit more research on a larger group of people before they are able to make that recommendation. How it usually occurs is Pfizer will make the recommendation to the CDC, and then the CDC would release their recommendation as well. It's a really good question to ask, well, if I had chicken pox, I don't have to get the chicken pox vaccine. So if I had COVID, why do I have to get the COVID vaccine? There's a couple of things. One is we could always test your immunity to chicken pox. Not everybody keeps immunity for their whole life, but how often do we see chicken pox in the community, right? Because of the vaccine, we've basically gotten rid of chicken pox. So the likelihood of you coming in contact with it and getting a second case of chicken pox years later after you had it when you were a child is very slim. So, but there are tests that we can do to check if you're still naturally immune to the chicken pox, just like there's tests we can do to see if you're still naturally immune to COVID. You can test for that antibody in your blood, which would tell us that you're still naturally immune to either one of those. However, if you think about it, if you had chicken pox, you still have to get the shingles vaccine. Well, the shingles vaccine is protecting you against chicken pox that is living in your nerve cells that can manifest as shingles when you get older. So it, you couldn't say I had chicken pox, I don't have to get the shingles vaccine. So it's, it's, it's hard to compare because you're not comparing apples to apples when you think about that. But in terms of just strict natural immunity, there's testing for both. But the difference between chicken pox and COVID is that COVID isn't, you're in an active COVID pandemic, whereas chicken pox occurring naturally is very rare. To answer the question, why are we seeing all of a sudden more COVID now in the summer months and things like that, when we usually expect to see respiratory viruses in the fall, is a little bit multifactorial and somewhat hard to answer. And I don't know that I absolutely have the correct answer for this. Um, we know that it took a while for the Delta variant to become prominent in the United States. Um, and once it did, due to its rapid replication and high, inf I guess, high level of infection um, is a way to say that. Um, that it spread very rapidly. So if you think about it, we've had more gatherings. We've all kind of, you know, we had our 4th of July where we saw a lot of spikes after that. And, you know, concerts are back on. Everything, you know, going on for the most part as usual. Um, not a lot of mask mandates, things like that. Um, so I think, you know, also the vaccination rate several months ago was a lot quicker. So we were almost getting ahead of things because people were getting vaccinated at a rapid rate. Well, vaccine rate dropped off. The Delta variant made its appearance. And we also started having more gatherings and things in the summer. And so due to how quickly and how infectious the Delta variant is, it's why we're starting to see a spike now. So, you know, it's hard to know what the future holds. The best chance we have at staying ahead of this and fighting things is to get everyone vaccinated. So my best recommendation to be able to enjoy our holidays with our families this year and to celebrate safely, um, to keep our young people and our, our, our family members out of the hospital, the best tool you have in your tool belt is this vaccine. So my best recommendation is to just get your vaccine, wash your hands, practice, you know, 
safe habits in terms of if someone's sick, maybe we don't go over to their house, maybe we, you know, we just use common sense in those manners. But remember, hand washing, getting your vaccine, th those are your tools to fight COVID. And so you can do it, you just have to start being aggressive with it.